As the entanglement of deceit and betrayal continues to show itself, if you will, in the ongoing saga of Alec Murdoch, the convicted murderer, which we can now say, it continues to unfold now to a once close friend. And you may have heard his name in the trial a little bit. We're going to tell you more about him today. He is Corey Fleming. And his role in this is quite twisted and relates to the estate of Gloria Satterfield, uh, which uh, is, as you are aware, uh, quite another dark turn in this. We'll talk about that whole story in here uh, in just a moment. Uh, The thing is, Fleming, he has admitted guilt in the grand conspiracy. Fleming, who is 54 years old, is acknowledged that he played a critical role in the assisting of Murdoch in the misappropriation of over $4 million in funds, funds that were intended to be a wrongful death settlement for the family of Gloria Satterfield, the late housekeeper of Alec Murdoch. This is really a big lesson uh, in, you know, like who you keep as friends and Mm. what they can do to you if you continue to uh, associate with them, I guess. Well, you know, you keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Don't they say it that way? Yeah, but does anyone do that uh, other than like really like <laughs> nefarious individuals? You know, I don't I I will be very honest. My husband uses that motto all the time, and but he's also he works in the legal field, so he yeah. understands how relationships work sure. and how you can use them to your advantage. So I I guess if you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing and you've got people around you that are also lending themselves to helping you do those things it, to me it makes sense you know hey i've got this this thing i can get you in on some money you in yeah you bet and the way that the track record had been going for alec murdoch for all those years uh it it seemed like a pretty sure bet for a while quite honestly that You'd get your money, that things would work out uh, the way that Alec wanted them to because of the power that he had. Uh, Murdaugh, just a few months after taking out a house insurance policy, devised a plan to exploit the untimely death of his 57-year-old housekeeper in 2018. Uh, Through a plot laden with duplicity, Murdaugh persuaded Satterfield's grieving sons to initiate a lawsuit against him, claiming that their mother's death was a result of his negligence. Who <laughs> says I want to be sued? Well, the, the whole purpose is so he didn't have to pay the money himself uh, and it would go straight to an insurance company and so he could control the whole narrative, if you will. However, the intent never really was to pay anyone. It was to, yeah, sue me and then tell them that it didn't work out and keep the money. The lawsuit aimed to leverage the insurance money specifically designed to address the wrongful death situations, much to the obliviousness of the Satterfield sons. This is where Corey Fleming, the personal injury attorney, comes into the picture. Murdaugh brought him on board to represent Satterfield's son in the lawsuit. So Murdaugh literally says to them, hey, you know, I want you to sue me, and I got a guy who can do all this. We can walk through it together. We'll make it all work. And that's where he brings Corey Fleming in. Leveraging his professional experience, Fleming successfully secured a $4.3 million settlement from the insurance company. However, instead of this windfall making its way to the deserving hands of the Satterfield boys, a grave injustice occurred. Fleming and Murdaugh pocketed the entire sum, dividing it between them. All the while, they wove that web of deceit, assuring the Satterfield sons that the settlement was yet to be reached. It takes time harsh reality of the fraud evidently uh, compelled Satterfield's son to engage in with new attorney attorneys thinking this might not be all it seems to be in a twist of faith they managed to secure a substantial 7.5 million dollars due to the fraudulent handing handling of that initial in, uh, settlement can you imagine finding that out you're dealing with oh. the death of your mom and these people are just swindling you well and not only that it wasn't just hey, we found a way to make some money off of somebody's untimely death. It looked like they killed her for this purpose, that that they had purchased that insurance money 
yeah. um, beforehand with the intent of we're going to kill her. We're going to make money off of it and fuck the family. Well, that's what it's starting to very much look like. The sons are still grappling with the mysterious circumstances of their mother's death and the yeah. fall, even especially since Murdaugh now from behind bars continues to wreak havoc in everyone's lives recently confessing to misrepresenting the events leading up to her death. Jeez. Law, Isn't he just a peach? A law enforcement agency in South Carolina is currently investigating the peculiar, the peculiar, peculiar, I can't ever say this word, peculiarities. There we go. Yeah. I got a new word in today surrounding Yay. Satterfield's uh, demise. Now, they don't take Alec for being a credible witness in any way, shape, or form. I should say that. But uh, it, it appears that Alec is trying to screw people over from behind bars because the insurance company now says, oh, this was fraudulent. Well, then you need to pay us back that money. And Alec is saying, uh, well, it was for them. So they got all this money, They, but he, they did not get that money from, didn't get the money from that settlement. It was not from those those coffers at all. So, but but it's Alex's attempt to try and make the victims have to pay back the insurance company because it was fraudulent. Yeah. How? Yeah, he's he just keeps crapping on everybody, doesn't he? You know, you you think he's evil with what we knew so far. I mean, it just he really gets into being evil. It's not just dumb and greedy and ignorant. He's evil. I mean, this is very evil type things to do uh, to, to anyone. Uh, the uh, related development that goes on along with this Nautilus insurance took that legal action against Murdoch and Fleming in May of 2022. They allege that the pair orchestrated the sophisticated lie around Satterfield's death, all to establish liability and receive that payout. Corey Fleming now finds himself... Uh, at the mercy of the court, facing the prospect of up to five years in prison, along with a quarter million dollar fine. Seems like it and should be more. He's going to lose his, his law license, too. So yeah. everything that he worked for, he's about to lose it. Shouldn't Corey Fleming be getting more than a quarter million dollar fine? Shouldn't it be like you have to pay back the two point five or whatever that it's split out to be? You would think so. You would think so. And and whatever the. um the um I can't think uh the law board goes after him with as well. Well he already um, finds yeah well he's already lost his he can't practice anymore. Yeah. Um well good. Murdaugh's legal team seems confident on on this one, expressing expectations that the charges will be resolved rapidly and possibly without a trial, which means Murdaugh may plead guilty uh to this one. I mean at this point, what does it even matter? Just well, and, and that's the thing. He's going to be spending so much time in prison. Why just why don't you just fess up to all the shit that you've done in your life? You know, at least let some people start to heal. Why don't you tell the truth about everything? Well, that is exactly right. But now, will someone like Alec Murdoch do that? No, I don't think he's no. capable, honestly, of doing that. And quite honestly, if, if he's in solitary confinement, which he is, and he says he absolutely hates He's going to be looking for any which way to get a day out of that that cell. Going mm -hmm. to court, going for that car ride, all of that is, you know, oh my gosh, just probably the best damn thing in the world right now to him and will be for the rest of his life. So having 100 plus other charges now pending against him, uh, it may be time to start either in, uh, making up crimes that you did or saying some yeah. things were crimes because those will all get you tickets to the courthouse for a new ride. And you got and, and maybe to lose. a subway sandwich for lunch, you know? Exactly. Uh, other than that, I mean, that's all he has at this point. So I would not be surprised if we continue to see him uh, trying to shit on everybody else that's out there, really for his own enjoyment of leaving the cell. I think that's really what it's going to start coming down to is how do I get out of here and get that always delicious, finely aged, chicken-like thing from Subway. Murder in the morning from the Hidden Killers Podcast. I kid Subway. I do eat there at times. Notice I didn't say like, but I do eat there at times. And I don't know. I mean, that the when you get the chicken breast, I don't know what the hell that is. That doesn't yeah, look like a chicken breast. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't feel like chicken. It looks like a chicken 
I don't know. I don't know what it is anyway. Chicken uh, pudding. That would be a chicken pudding. New chicken pudding at the subway. You can, <laughs> it's kind of like what the chicken salad is, though, sometimes. Uh, all right. If you like the uh, podcast, be sure to press subscribe wherever you download it so you don't miss any of our episodes and get an ad-free experience through Apple Podcasts. Sign up there right now. For Stacy, I'm Tony. Stay with us. Stay with us.